Welcome to Deepen with Pastor Joby Martin. The Church of 1122 is a movement for all people to discover and deepen a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're praying this message helps you deepen your relationship with Him. Now let's dive in. Welcome back to the Deepen Podcast. My name is Jonathan Vinky. I'm here with Caitlin Armstrong. The Gaga. And of course, of ministry. <laughs> your favorite pastor and mine, Pastor Joby Martin. We are talking about perhaps our favorite topic. I'm not mm. my favorite pastor, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, our, one of our favorite topics, obviously, is the gospel. That's that's the big heading. That's going to be the heading, a lot of headings in this week. In this uh, week, I will say this. Week I, did, I did have this kind of like panic moment this week as I'm preparing sermons, you know? So I, <laughs> I sit down in the woods. I read the, t- it's four verses. Uh-huh. I feel like the Lord gives me an idea of where to go, which is always just his grace, man. He does not owe me a sermon. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to do this like, you know, Jesus plus, Jesus plus. We'll talk about it. So I get done with it. I'm like, sweet. And then I thought, oh, no, I could do that. There's like six more right. passages that we're going to teach on. All right. Now what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm not going to like hedge my bets in preaching mm-hmm. this weekend to try to save something for next time. Right. So. Repetition is never yeah, a bad yeah. thing. I have right. no idea where we're going in the future yeah. when it when it gets something like, you know, the law cannot justify you and stuff like that. Right, so right. Anyway. Let me ask you this question. Somebody asked me this uh, in the lobby. And so there's, a, if you know, if you've been around church and, you know, I grew up in such a way where Matt Chandler was coming on the scene and Piper was sending me his like CDs. Like, did you guys ever do the CD like subscription? Yeah, no, no, like- send you a note. From the Desiring Hi, John. God. <laughs> Here's a how CD you, I just cut. That Love, up. <laughs> John Piper. <laughs> it was before, like the Netflix of yeah, Christian. Before yeah, you, before Desiring God was like as developed on the as the website, you would you'd signed up and they were you'd get the sermon sent okay. on CDs. I just didn't know if he was like asking you to proof them before yeah, he shared them. Yeah, it's, I mean, he and I are, are super close. But uh, anyway, the, for you, Pastor Jeb, we're... <laughs> How did how did you develop uh, the gospel as the center, the thing you go over and over and over again? Yeah. Where did that come from for you? My relationship with Acts 29 mm-hmm. and those two men that you talked about. Okay. So when we were planting a church, I didn't know anything about church planting organizations. There are multiple. Uh, I wanted to submit myself to some group for assessment because, you know, Gretchen and my grandma were like, you got it, buddy. <laughs> and I was like, eh, whatever. And we had so much momentum. You were here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had so much momentum. This thing was happening, and I did not need anyone's, like I didn't need denominational money or approval. Mm -hmm. This thing is happening. So I had to will willingly and willfully, I wanted to submit myself to some kind of process. And so it was going, it was in going through the assessment process of Acts 29 that I was like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. I'm a reformed person. I didn't even know that. All the ones I know are so mad. I don't feel like I'm one of those, you know? Like, I love Jesus, and I think he loves people. Mm-hmm. That's not the Calvinist I know. They're all, their favorite part is total depravity. They didn't make it past that. Anyway, uh, it was that. It was listening to those two men that you're talking about, um, and just, and, and then teaching the Bible, not topically, mm-hmm. but uh, as you exposit the scriptures, especially, we were doing, you know, you start doing books of the Bible, and you're like, Paul just keeps repeating a lot about the gospel, you mm-hmm. know? Even like tonight, I mentioned 1 Corinthians 15. He says, I would remind you, brothers, of mm-hmm. the gospel. So it was that. But I, I credit a lot of it to the the iron sharpening that I received from my relationship with Acts 29 mm-hmm. Network, mm-hmm. which I thank God for it. Yes. Um, we, in America, it's increasingly what we would call post-Christian. So if... Maybe a hundred years ago, if somebody said, "Hey, what's the gospel?" They, there might be culturally a level of knowledge, but even words like God or prayer or pastor, you know, there's not as much common understanding of what those things are. So let's say you meet somebody on the street, and they have no this word "gospel" is completely foreign to them. Like, what's the? Let me explain to you, someone with no context, what does that mean? With no context, that matters because if like you look at Paul and Acts. Mm-hmm depending on the context that determine it shaped how he shared the gospel. Mm-hmm. So no context, you were made by God for God. Mm-hmm. He's perfect, you're not. There's this huge chasm between that. Mm-hmm. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to bridge that chasm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What creates that chasm is your imperfection or sin. You miss the mark. I think mm-hmm. that's a good illustration, mm-hmm. and it's a Bible word out of Romans 3.23. You miss the mark. So Jesus came to live a perfect life. You believe in him, you get credit for him, and he takes punishment for you. Mm-hmm. And then you will be, you will fulfill what you were created for, mm-hmm. which is a relationship with God. Mm. That's like the most basic. That's the elevator, the elevator pitch. That's it. What's your elevator That's like your gospel elevator pitch. That's like the airplane, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mine would be similar just thinking through like often we want to start with the bad news, right? Like we want to jump right to you're a sinner, you're an enemy of God, Mm -hmm. but making sure we start with the good news that we were created in the image of God and that he loves us and, and wants relationship with us and then go into sin separates us but he loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to do because mm. it is compelling. Yeah, for sure. Like, you ever feel like you were created for more? You know, whatever, whatever you want to <laughs> phrase that like destiny question. Right. You right. feel like do you feel like there's a destiny for your life? You know what I mean? So that's yeah. if I feel like we're starting it with no background or whatever. Yeah, I mean, everyone's asking like, why am I here? That's it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think so? This is a little bit of a side sidetrack, but so I, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about the felt need of a person uh, when you talk about something from the scripture, and um, a lot of times the the gospel centered way would be so. Well, this is about God and His glory, which is true. Uh, and then there's like the opposite end of the pendulum, which is addressing purely the felt needs. So, how do you blend the two? together and like you just said like do you feel like you're made for more do you feel like you have a destiny or don't you feel like there's something wrong with the world is that is putting it into those terms for somebody of their felt need like what you do in the beginning only because they they can't handle the glory of god thing yet or how how, how do you resolve that tension Uh, i mean i do think you can you can uh you can bring it up when you're talking about who god is and his character and nature Mm -hmm. right and wouldn't you want to know a God like that if you were mm-hmm. created for him? Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of language that we use inside the scriptures and inside the church that is just going to be completely foreign mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to the person that has not bought into that idea. Mm-hmm. So I would just, again, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? It is the power for salvation. Mm-hmm. So, but again, Paul is a really good example. When he is in Athens and he's... Mm-hmm. Talking, he does not quote the scriptures. He does not start with. He starts with their idol or statue to an unknown god. So he finds a connection point. Yeah, and no one would be like Paul's such a sellout. He's such a seeker sensitive, right? Person, you know, not at all. He's meeting those people where they are, and he's delivering it in a different way. Paul wants to see people get saved, right? Mm -hmm. So. I'm preaching at an Acts 29 conference, speaking of my brethren, uh, coming up. And I'm going to wear them out on often the most theologically astute and accurate groups can lose the, they lose the narrative. Mm. This is about people meeting Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not doing what it takes for people to meet Jesus, Mm -hmm. I don't care how theologically accurate you are, man. Mm -hmm. You missed the point. The point is to get people to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I I think like even... Now, like you have to be super intentional to say the name of Jesus because mm-hmm. when you say God, mm-hmm. a lot of times people are misinterpreting, they're thinking a different, you know, yeah. it can just be whatever you believe in, whatever that is. And so, even like I'm talking to uh, someone that I know doesn't believe in Christ, and she's asking me a question like she saw my kids all running around in the front yard. She says, How's your mental health? <laughs> She asked me that. And I said, well, let me tell you, like Jesus, and I kept just saying his name. I said, well, I believe in Jesus and he has helped me um, heal me of some anger that I had, you know, in my parenting. Oh, okay. And then, and then it just, it would kind of, you know, it, I'm, I'm declaring his name, but it's, I'm also meeting her where she's at, mm. where she's got kids and she's wondering, how are you like doing this? You know? Mm. Well, I have a question from the, from the t- ver- the first verse, verse six, which he didn't uh, totally get into this aspect of it, but this word st- stood out to me as I was reading it before. Verse six, it says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the gospel. So what what is the, 
how quick do you think it was? What do you think that what do you think the, that that means? The good news is uh, it's like it's between twelve to eighteen months mm-hmm. from the time he planted these churches to the time the letter hit them. Okay, so like it's just historical fact. Mm-hmm. So he's like, what? What? Mm-hmm. Like it was going so good, mm-hmm. and I just got home, yeah. and I'm getting news that you're yeah you're being bewitched. Uh, it's funny. Um, in I think it's in you mentioned Martin Luther's commentary. I think what he said he says something to that effect, like the the best work that you labor over and over and over again for years, it only takes a second. It can be destroyed in a second. Yeah, that's ministry, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. ministry. Yeah. What does it mean? So when he's talking about deserting and turning to a different gospel, how is this different from the process of sanctification that you're on, um, or or the if you fall away for a period, but we're, and I grew up in the church when they were talk, they would talk about like, are you backslidden? You know, <laughs> do you need to rededicate your life to the Lord? So how is that Every different? <laughs> yes. How is that different from what he's saying? <laughs> yeah, because you weren't trusting God for your salvation. Now, First John's going to tell us that if you departed from us, you were never part of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I do think the Galatians are saved. It, the the evidence throughout the rest of the text seems to be that, you know, we'll get to it in the upcoming weeks. But the word deserting, it means like turncoat. Mm. Uh, He also says that you are turning from the gospel. So just like you repented to turn to, it's like Paul is catching them before they do it, but he's saying, Mm. if you try to add to the work of Christ, you're not trusting Christ as your savior, but like as a partner in your salvation, these are not the same things. This is very important. I think of it as, you know, the Christian life is a life of repentance. I always just go back to Peter. Like, I I, I bet people would classify Peter as backsliding (laughs) when he denies Jesus, right? And, like, all of these things that he does, but then there's repentance, and Jesus restores him. And when I talk to people, that's a common thing that I bring up is— like I use this analogy all the time is when big news, all my kids are potty trained now. Okay. Ooh, there you go. Big news. If the tomb is empty. If the, yeah. Right. So there's hope. Uh, but my, I would say like when my daughter had a, had a poopy diaper, like she would come to me and, and tell me, and I wouldn't say that's disgusting. Go clean it up. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like when I, when in that repentant life, it's like, I bring my sin to Christ and he's not telling me that's disgusting. Go clean it up. Mm -hmm. Right. He takes care of it. Just like I would take care of my daughter's Mm -hmm. diaper. Uh, And so in that, like, I just, I can't even stand that word like backsliding because it's that, that idea of we are going to continue to wrestle in our flesh, but it's coming to Christ over Mm -hmm. and over again. I'm not totally opposed to the concept. There are people that for seasons of their life live in what seems to be willing, unrepentant sin. That That is, it, I'm old enough to know when that phrase was like very common, mm-hmm. um, which is different than like struggling with sin sure. and you're worrying. Man, I'm, I met these two dudes tonight. It was so great. They're in the Coast Guard and they're stationed here and they're about to go somewhere else. And it was just great, young guys. And one of them was like, man, can I ask you some questions? I'm, I'm just, I'm struggling. And I just said, Who's not? <laughs> Everybody is or not or acting like they're not. Those are the only two, you know. And uh, and he was. I, we didn't get into the specifics of it. And I was trying. He was like, "I'm so fr- I'm afraid. I'm going to let God down or let like tarnish my witness when I sin." And I'm like, "Dude, the fact that you're so torn up over this is such evidence of Christ's work in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, and that spirit of fear does not come from the Lord. And maybe." I'm not saying you should sin. Please war against it. But sometimes what people need to see is what the Christian does when they sin. Mm -hmm. You know, like the gospel is not, I'm nailing this. Mm. And he was, I mean, I was like, so I told him, read Romans 7. Just read all of Romans 7 and get to 8-1. That's your answer. Mm -hmm. Mm. So Mm -hmm. in just case you're riding in the car and can't look this up and don't have it memorized, Romans 7 is Paul, as a believer, struggling, being tormented between mm-hmm. the war of the spirit and the flesh inside of him. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, what's wrong with me? Why do I do the things I don't want to do? And the good things I want to do, I can't pull them off. Yeah. And then he asks this question, like, what a wretched man am I? Who would save me? Mm-hmm. Glory to Jesus, which leads to Romans 8, 1. Therefore now there's mm-hmm. no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So that's different than backslidden, the, the way the phrase is used. is 
I mean, it is dangerous of like, are you even saved if you're just willfully living in unrepentant sin and not even bothered by it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because the gospel of cheap grace is no gospel. The like campfire salvation gospel that doesn't impact you. Yep. I'm writing a whole book on this thing, like run over by the grace train. If your life has not changed, then did you really surrender your life to Christ? Yeah. And I'm not super judgy, like trying to, I'm not the salvation police, like judging everybody's salvation. At least I try not to be, but I actually am sometimes. <laughs> yeah, the good news is for the person who seems far from God and the person who seems close, the only person that will ultimately judge that their heart is Christ sure. at the final, at the final judgment. The, um, the, the concept reminds me a little bit, you know, in academia, if you're, if you're t taking different courses and trying to get degrees, like there are certain degrees that are terminal degrees. Like there's some that are like you get and you keep building upon them. And then there are certain classifications that if you get that one, there's no more you add to it. So, this, when you said to repent, repent from the, repent from the gospel would be to to turn from the gospel, right? So it's like no, no, he's trying to explain to them when you get into the gospel, it's the it's a destination, okay. it's terminal, it's mm -hmm. either you don't move on from it, and we're gonna get more of that uh, in our discussion too. But so, what was the false gospel that was being preached to them? And then we're gonna talk a little about some of the false gospels that you outlined that maybe they're more modern day. So these were uh, there was a group of people from Jerusalem who were Jewish believers, and they were called the Judaizers. Mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, 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 Jesus died on the cross for your sin, and that's great. But you also have to get circumcised and obey the law in order to be saved mm -hmm. because God said to do those things. Right. He said those things in the old covenant pre-Jesus. Jesus comes with a new and better covenant, mm -hmm. the covenant, and it's a covenant of grace. So they were adding to, they were like, Jesus plus. Right. In this case, circumcision and obedience to the Mosaic Law. Mm -hmm. And Paul, dude, he he doesn't he doesn't say, well, you know what, you're a little off. He's like, be damned, mm. is what he says. This is life or death eternally. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. Mm. So it's why I went after it so pointedly. Mm -hmm. But and there's this thing in us, in all of us, us three too. I think I think it's rooted in uh, we have a really hard time receiving gifts, you know. And the more you have a hard time receiving gifts, like the less you actually believe the gospel. I hope everybody knows that, mm. including the gift of salvation, because we want credit. Mm. We just want credit. We want to be able to be like, yeah, Jesus died on the cross, and I raised my hand, and I, mm. and it's not I, it's just He. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I received. That's all I did. Was received. And I think, do you think his strong language there, anathema, damned, is it more motivated by his belief in the importance of the purity of the gospel or his anger at the people who would twist it? I think it is just the reality of what is happening. If you don't trust Christ alone for your salvation, mm -hmm. you will be set apart for destruction unto the Lord. Yeah. That is what happens without the gospel. Yeah. There so, is not, there's nothing more serious, is what right. he's saying. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, if you had a disease and they had, the, they had the shot that would cure you, but instead of that, you put in Kool Aid, you're damned. Mm -hmm. Like, it, that doesn't work for that cure. That's what he's saying. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. I think about the, uh, you were talking about it a little bit in the sermon about, I say like a half truth is a whole lie and how they distorted. And I think I thought about those carnival mirrors, like oh, those yeah. fun mirrors, you know, that you go in and it's like, it's a mirror. I can see myself, but I, but I can't really, cause it's all distorted. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's just like, like you're saying nothing else matters. I mean, this is the most serious thing ever because mm -hmm. it impacts our eternity and our life here, you know, like, mm. like Jesus says, I've come to give you abundant life here, not just in the future. Mm. Yeah. Miss this. You miss everything. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's worth some strong language. There are some things that are worth getting upset about. I mean, so Jesus, there's a misunderstanding of Jesus that he was, you know, meek and mild. And, but there, anybody says that hasn't read the Bible. <laughs> right. 
But even like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it's ridiculous. He's mean as heck. <laughs> even even certain personalities, though. I mean, I think my myself included. It's like try to be even keel, try to be you know under control. But there are, I have to remind myself, there are some things that are worth getting fired up about. You know, that's that's a yeah. part of what this is. And reminding there's an authority. Us, you know? Like I don't know if this is the best parenting move, but I'm still figuring this all out. But when my when my kids get to a level of like tantrum screaming in the van as I'm like, I, we're going to get in an accident. Like if this <laughs> continues, sometimes to break it, like I yell louder and I look at them and say, I can be louder than you. Like I'm the authority. I'm the boss in this van. I would be afraid of you. And it does something to them because, but it, it depends on the heart of it. Like, before I would do that out of anger. Mm -hmm. Now I do it at a place of saying, this is a tool I'm using. Just like, I mean, Jesus is intense. He's mm. getting a point across. He's not just going to whisper the gospel the whole time, right? He fashioned a whip. He fashioned a whip. So he's saying, I'm the boss in this house, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. And he raises the bar, man. He's like, if I preach another gospel, if, if anybody with me, the other apostles, mm -hmm. If the angels preach another gospel, mm -hmm. anathema, be yeah. damned. Mm -hmm. And then just to sum it up, anyone, <laughs> right? <laughs> in case I left anybody out, <laughs> anyone else, uh, you, uh, I was talking to one of my one mores recently and had that pretty common response like, well, I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. but I kind of just feel like all you got to do is be good. It's kind of all the same, right? It's like you just, Oh. Love people, be good, whatever. So you outlined some things, Pastor Joby, like that you called like more modern day false gospels and exposed religions, denominations, and then in inside of a inside of the church, like different viewpoints that would mm -hmm. um, count as maybe a modern day false gospel. So what 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 are some of those that you wanted to touch on, maybe a little more or a recap? I mean, I don't know. You pick because. The list is long. I tried to cover everything, at least everything I yeah. can think of, including 1122. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not Jesus plus the things at 1122, your yeah. participation. It is yeah. just Jesus that saves. Well, let's start with like the other, what I would consider other religions. So, you know, for sure, for sure, for sure Mormonism and Jehovah's Witness, I consider those, those are not denominations. Those not are different all. religions. Those are by definition cults. Yes. That take many, many, many true Christian realities and mm -hmm. twist some core mm -hmm. and key doctrines. Mm -hmm. The thing they both have in common is works-based righteousness. Yes. They, uh, both of their published doctrines, which I read quotes from, mm -hmm. a bunch of different ones, say that faith alone does not save. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, they deny eternal punishment, Trinity, the deity of Christ, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and think that you work your way, you earn your salvation. Mormonism, very much the same thing. They think it is it is faith in Jesus plus obedience to the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the reason I picked out Mormonism in particular, is because Joseph Smith claimed that an angel revealed mm. this to him. Mm -hmm. And Paul sp specifically says, even if we or an angel of heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. Which in our world, in my, in, okay, if you're thinking about being a Mormon, don't know Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you are a Mormon, come talk to us. We can talk about what the scripture says, because what Joseph Smith did and what uh, Charles Russell did is they rewrote the Bible mm -hmm. to fit what they believed. Mm -hmm. They changed very significant words in certain verses. Uh, so that matters a lot. Mm -hmm. And any biblical historian can tell you that's just true. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we can do that is similar to Mormonism is we have an experience or a feeling or a desire mm -hmm. or an idea, and that is preeminent in our life. Mm -hmm. And then we mold the Word of God to try to support what we want. Right. So that is ultimately what Joseph Smith did. Yeah. Don't you think it's so interesting because, like, the plus, especially in these cults, it's— Okay, we believe Jesus came and died, but you have to do this too. Well, then what's the point of even him doing that on the cross? Well, that's what Paul will get there in a couple of weeks or whenever. Galatians 2.21 is like, I don't nullify the 
death and resurrection of Christ. So if if law adds to it, then he died for then nothing. He died for nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the question Jesus is asking. Mm-hmm. Father, if there be any other way. Mm-hmm. Right. So like if law keeping is a way, then why do I need to die? Right. Right. Yeah. And to your point earlier about saying the name of Jesus, the opposite end of that is not everybody who is going to say the name of Jesus yes. is talking about him the it's same way. About the so I th- Jesus, yeah. I think that's so helpful to get mm-hmm. a, a a really great summary of the beliefs of those things because you drive you drive by like a Jehovah's Witness church something like that, and I I think a lot of people don't really know what is that really all about. Or I think right? here's here's part of the reason I mentioned this. I mean, listen, man, we have some dear dear friends that come from a. Jehovah's Witness family, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I'm also not trying to just like punch people in the face sure. here. Because yeah. the the I said this. People are like, well, I have Mormon and Jehovah's Witness friends. They're so nice. I'm like, bro, they're the nicest, most loving people ever. Mm-hmm. And they better be because you got to earn your salvation. So you don't you don't get a pass, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying these people just aren't delightful and so nice and use mm-hmm. so, so many of the same terms and names that we do. Mm-hmm. But... Paul's assessment of their doctrine would be mm-hmm. that is no gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I love that you pointed out, like when you're talking about the angel thing that I didn't, I didn't look up the, the verse of this, but angels disguise themselves as an angel of light. Like say, what's the scripture? Satan even himself disguises himself as an angel of light. Correct. So it's like, it's going to look great. It's going to mm-hmm. feel like it's great. Yeah. It's going to seem nice and yeah. attractive and, right. and, Right. So one of the things that Satan has used against people is to think that he's going to be scary and or you know red suit with a pitchfork. But no, no, it's going to be right. enticing. Yeah, so I would say to Joseph raised. Smith, that was a demon you were talking to. Right. Demon. If right. it was real, you were talking if, to a demon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then inside Christian Christian churches, there's you mentioned legalism, cheap grace. Or things like baptism, religious activity, uh, experience, feelings, that kind of thing. I mean, that beach ball, that beach ball analogy is so good. I think last, I think last time I had a beach ball at the beach, I went and tried it. it. You, I tried, it. <laughs> you preached the gospel to yourself. Well, no, it, it right. literally is impossible. <laughs> like, so go out there and try it, and that illustration is going to hit home so much better. So the legalism thing, dude. I, all right. So anytime I mention anything about drinking, dude, some of the. Um, some of the emails I get, I mean, bro, they are fiery, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and to the point where they'll question. They need to have a beer. <laughs> it, it, it's always those people that just need to relax and just take a sip of whiskey. So listen, the, the, part of what I tried to do to kind of redeem some things here, at the end, I went through, I went back through the entire list. Mm. I didn't name them all. Yeah, yeah. And I talked about the good thing. Mm-hmm. So... The problem with legalism is what's wise for me if I make it mandatory for you for salvation. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the Pharisees were screwed, man. Mm-hmm. The idea, Pharisee means separated. So the idea that they would separate themselves from this culture and live a holy life, they would be best prepared to see the Messiah when he showed up. Mm-hmm. They missed him every time, man. Mm-hmm. The demon possessed saw him clearly. You know what I mean? The worst. The prostitutes were like, that's our guy. Okay. Mm. So when you take anything, like if you don't think it's a good idea to watch certain movies, listen, I agree with you. Mm. I think there's a bunch of movies that Christians watch that should you shouldn't watch that. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's pornography. It's I, I am with you. Mm-hmm. But if you make it a means to your salvation, that is no gospel. Right. So that's what's key. It's very, very, very wise for many, many people to never drink ever or even go to a place that serves it. Mm-hmm. To acquire that for salvation is no gospel. Mm-hmm. It's actually demonic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. So my favorite, speaking of Dr. Piper, since we talk about him every minute now, I, dude, this is really old sermon, bro. It's like it's got to be thirty years old or something. Yeah. Like you can, you can. It's probably from pre CDs when he used to send me tapes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he does one on on alcohol, and he is a teetotaler. He doesn't drink. He thinks it's dumb. Why would you do it? It can only end in bad things. There's no good things. Mm-hmm. The problem is he knows his Bible. Mm-hmm. So he, I think what happened, I could, my details could be wrong. So if so, you know, I'm sure somebody will fact check me. 
I think what happened is he took over as pastor at Bethlehem Baptist, and it was a requirement to be a member of their church to sign like a we don't drink covenant. Mm -hmm. And he took it out. And he said, and you should Mm -hmm. never drink. I would implore you to never do it. Mm -hmm. But I can't have more rules than the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then he's, my favorite line is he says, legalism has sent more people to hell than alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And he's right. He's Mm -hmm. so right. Listen, we live in a town where a very famous pastor in the 90s said, I'd rather have a rattlesnake in my baby's bed than that devil's brew in my refrigerator (laughs) in Jacksonville. (laughs) And his granddaughter, (laughs) dude, have you heard him preach? That's what he sounds like. (laughs) And thousands of people from that church now go to this church. So one time on stage, I was like, I just want to be clear. I would rather have a cold beer in my hand right now at church than a rattlesnake anywhere on my property. Okay, so that's when you begin to, like, is there wisdom in warning about strong drink and drunkenness? For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink. I've never drank because I've had a... I've had a personal conviction about that. I don't I don't see anywhere in scripture it says it's a sin to be drunk. Correct. And that's it. And so I don't this is a personal conviction that the Lord has given me and I don't put that on anyone else. And I shouldn't flaunt my freedom. Right. In pride. Exactly. See, that's crazy. I've known you for 15, yeah. 16. I never knew that. I mean, Yeah. You've never like brought so you're the perfect example of what freedom is. Yeah. Like you're yeah, free not to, I'm yeah. free to, and none of we've we've never questioned each other's salvation at all. Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm. Because it's not in scripture. That's what right, right, right. that's what I don't understand. Mm. People that are emailing you, what is even their argument? Like you don't even know what's in this coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw you poured it in there. Sparkling so. it's water. Actually, it's this right here. <laughs> this is sponsored by Perrier. Perrier. <laughs> but my daddy would probably rather me have a beer than this. He's like, son, I ain't what's the kind of what's the, what, what, But the, 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 French the people that would see me on the dance floor thought that I was hammered. Was hammered. And I thought, and I said, man, I, the moves. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fine tomorrow morning. Right. I'm so good. <laughs> so then the pendulum swings all the way to the other side, which is licentiousness or, mm-hmm. you know, the root word there is license. I can mm-hmm. do what I want. Right. right. Well, so this is kind of that cheap grace camp mm-hmm. mentality of which I, mm. what would happen is, so I went to a, I mean, it was straight fundamentalist camp. There were rules on the rules. Like, uh, you know, if a boy showed up to camp with an earring, they made him take it out. And I thought, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? We're missing the point. Missing the point. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, and the guy that made him take it out was overweight by about 200 pounds. So, anyway, don't worry about that. That was fine. You could be you could be a total glutton, but if you had an earring, it, it was the worst. So, uh, so, I would get really, I was into it, man. I was into Jesus, like as a teenager. And so, I would go home and try to mimic the behavior of the people that I thought were mature Christians. Mm-hmm. They get up extra early. They do an extra long quiet time. They memorize a bunch of verses. All of those things are really, really good. I would fail miserably, and then I thought, well, I'm screwed, but I know it next year at camp I can do the rededication thing, mm-hmm. and I might as well give Jesus his money worth. So I would load it all up. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not the gospel either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cheap grace. That is, that is, yeah, and it's very costly. Like sin is such a big deal. Jesus had to die for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And his grace is such a big deal that therefore now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah, and Paul actually says you don't understand grace if that's how you view it. You know, Romans 6, 2 is, uh, we're going to keep sinning that grace would get more. It's like, no. By no means. Uh, that's why I... That's a strong I, phrase in the Greek too. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, that's why I, I pointed it out to that the word Lord has meaning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you cannot simultaneously say, you don't get to tell me what to do and say, you are my Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, one of the places that shows up in most is sex and sexuality in our culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, look, man, you can do whatever you want to do. You, you can't do whatever you want to do and say Jesus is your Lord. Mm-hmm. To say he's your Lord is that I don't get to do what I want to do anymore. I'm forgiven of every time I screw up and I'm submitted to do what he says. And when I screw up again, I repeat the cycle. And when I get rebellious, but I Mm. still have to come back and be like, Mm. 
-hmm. I repent. So you can't simultaneously say, I don't care what his word says. I don't care what his commands are. Dude, even if his commands were just completely random, Mm -hmm. they were like, you got to wear blue jeans on Tuesdays. Well, you better have your blue jeans on. Because you don't get to make up the stuff. And one day when we see clear, you'd be like, that's why Blue Jean Tuesday was a thing. You know, like it would make sense. <laughs> it's not submission until you don't get it. Yeah. Now, the longer you live, the more you're like, guys, laws make sense. Mm-hmm. Man, they're a light to my path, you know? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned this in the, in the sermon that oftentimes we want to, we're drawn to these things because we like to feel like we're part we're part of it. Like we like to get some of the glory for what, for our salvation. Is there anything else to that? Like what, what motivates a person to this, these people that are teaching a distorted gospel or the people that would be, would believe it? Like what's the motivation there? Like, why would you turn from it? Why, why would you want to add? receivers of it. I mean, so, you know, we're called sheep for a reason. Mm-hmm. So if you just drew, grew up in a tradition and the guy up front with the power mm-hmm. And all you ever heard was him tell you, if you don't get baptized, you're going to hell. Mm-hmm. Then you, you're probably not doing the Martin Luther deep dive into the gospel to see, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, occasionally that happens, but most people are sheep. You just, what's the guy saying? That's why I would highly encourage anybody that listens to me. Part of the reason I'm like, if you got your Bibles, pull it out and let's read this together. I want you to see these words. Mm-hmm. And so we should test Test the spirits. Make sure this stuff is from God. So I think a bunch of it is just that. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Where is it that Paul commends a group of people? Is it Thessalonians? or He says, you didn't just take our word for it. Like you earnestly searched it out. I can't think of the reference right now, but that's that's how everybody should be. I wouldn't listen to any preaching, you know, Um, which that leads us to a a So let's talk about the Catholic thing real quick because we've got a bunch of Catholics. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not trying to beat up on the Catholics. There are many, many, many social things I think we should link arms with and mm-hmm. fight the good fight of womb to tomb together, like fight against abortion, fight, you know, what all these kind of things. It is the oldest, the, long, the longest stand. I mean, everybody was Catholic before 1500. Yeah. <laughs> so. just, well, it could be Greek Orthodox, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, all the Western right. people now, yes. Yeah. So, what began to happen, because this happens, you can see is that people take the good news of the gospel and begin to add to. Mm-hmm. Well, you give it 1,500 years and Martin Luther is, he's just this crazy monk that's trying to be saved. Mm-hmm. And he's, and his, and the the priests are like, dude, quit. And he would confess for like eight hours a day mm-hmm. and then come back the next day and do it again. They're wearing him out. And so uh, he's also like a professor. So he's, he's studying the book of Romans mm-hmm. and it, it just kills him, man. And he's, he's like, wait, we're justified by faith alone? That by works of the law, no man can be justified? What? And in that case, they were selling indulgences, which they made up. So you, if if your whatever loved one died, and I and the priest was like, they're in purgatory, but for a donation, we can cut down on the years of purgatory. Mm-hmm. And then Martin Luther's like, well, wait a second, that ain't in the book. Mm-hmm. All right. But most people didn't have access to the Bible at that Nobody point. Did. Right, yeah. right, right. Totally. So they didn't know. So they're doing what I'm saying. They believe the guy in the funny robe up front. Right. Mm-hmm. Which I still don't know why people wear funny clothes like that, but whatever. Have you heard Joe Rogan talk about this? It's kind of hilarious. He's like, does nobody ask why people are dressed like wizards? <laughs> like, Rrr. Anywho, so the, the uh, there are two primary discoveries through the Reformation buried under sacramentalism. One was the authority of the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So that was the foundational. The other was the the matter at hand, which was that salvation is in faith alone. It's in through gra- or by grace through faith in Christ alone alone alone. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so the difference between our church and the Catholic Church is that the authority is the word of God, not me. Mm-hmm. I do not get to add to it. This isn't. A, I'm not even trying to say a negative thing. Just the current structure in the Roman Catholic Church is authority is a three is like a stool with three legs. Mm-hmm. The Bible is one of the authorities. The Pope is one of the authorities, and then Catholic tradition and councils mm-hmm. are authorities. Right. Okay. Well, over time, what got added in it are things like 
their view of Mary. Uh, what got added in are things like purgatory, uh, c- confession to a priest, celibacy for a priest. All these things are like, they had meetings and people are like, you know what we should do? You know, we should, like, priests can't get married. Like, what? That's not what it says. Mm-hmm. All right. So, in the in the Council of Trent, which was the Catholic Church's response to the Reformation, they say, uh, if you think that by faith alone, absolution and justification are affected, let them be accursed. Mm-hmm. So, they think, well, like I read, Ludwig Ott says, for the justified, eternal life is both both a gift of grace promised by God and a reward for his own good works and merits. Hmm. So that is the official hmm. teaching of the Catholic Church. Okay, now, you may be Catholic, and you if you have surrendered to Jesus and trust in the finished work of Christ, then you are saved. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying all Catholics are going to hell. Just like I wouldn't say all Baptists are going to heaven. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's a whole bunch of people that get mixed yeah. up. I thought that was great. But the, I do not all 1122 are going to heaven because they think a lot of our people believe in a cheap, licentious grace. Mm. They think I can do whatever I want. You know, when we got picketed by those like super right people, the reason yes. they picketed us is because they were sharing the gospel. Well, they were sharing a, a gospel that's not a gospel down like at the Jackson Beach bars. And they had all the verses from Revelation where it says drunkards will not go to heaven. And they're like, you can't go to heaven because you're drunk. And the drunk people would come out of the bars and be like, Blank you. I go to 1122. <laughs> and they got enough of that that they were like, they're not preaching the gospel here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you had the two extremes there. So it, it is the gospel that saves us. And again, we talked about this last week or something. What the Catholic doctrine is, is that when you partake in the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist, mm-hmm. grace is imparted unto you. Mm-hmm. So you do your part, he does his part. Mm-hmm. That is not the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's not. Mm-hmm. The gospel is that when you believe in Jesus, his righteousness is imputed to you, period. Mm-hmm. Now, because of that, you you try to live an obedient life through the power of mm-hmm. the gospel. Now, again, the good thing that I don't want people to lose is religious activity for the right reasons is a really good thing. Mm-hmm. We call that vivification. This is how you abide in Christ. You know, mm-hmm. do your quiet time. Right. Liturgy is a good thing. Mm-hmm. That, that that there would be kind of a rhythm to your worship services, and it all point to it's like doxologically excellent, mm-hmm. and you get your eyes off of the people standing on stage because it doesn't matter who's leading it. Mm-hmm. The thing is the you know the the mm-hmm. worship is the worship, and so these are good things. Yes, but if you try to connect the religious activity as salvific. Mm-hmm. I mean, Paul has very, very strong words about that. I've heard it described, I think we talked about this. I've heard it described this. The good parts about it is that all these traditions are looking for the presence of God. And mm-hmm. where they where they find it is different. But he's, the presence of God is in all these things, right? So the Reformed tradition finds the presence of God in the preached word. Yep. And then the liturgical tradition finds it in the, the sacraments or the particularly the Eucharist. And then the like charismatic tradition would find the presence of God in the expression of the gifts or the experience. You know, you might add to that the the more recent like the presence of God is located in wisdom for living. You know yeah. what I mean? So, and there is like it's like exactly what you're saying. Really good things being taken as the only thing. You know, to, at the exclusion of the others. What we really need is all of them. I I was I thought when you're talking about Martin Luther that those abuses. Uh, tie this together from something you said earlier. Those abuses of the church were being were preying upon people who were legalists and who were licentious. Yeah, you know, so indulgences mm-hmm. prey on people who are legalists because, like, oh no, I'm afraid that I've trans. So that so they're like, pay, they'll shell it all out, right? Because they want the absolution for their conscience. But then the the licentious people are just like, I'm about to go do some. They sinning. would prepay. Yeah, I'm gonna prepay and do How that. How about that? Yeah. I got a really wild weekend in Vegas. I'm going to give an extra donation. We're you running know? a spring break special here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Martin Luther, he was just, uh, you know, he was like, if I could just get to Rome and see the glory of the church there, and he got there, and it was the worst there. Oh. You know, all these pilgrims are just like, 
wailing on these steps that they thought came from, you know, Pilate's Praetorium or whatever. And he's just like, are you serious? Like this, he was so disappointed. He like went into a depression afterwards. Um, but so what, let's talk about, give some people some tools to discernment about pre preaching that they listen to. Okay. So there's a lot of preaching out there. I mean, this is the age of YouTube. You can go and listen to any preacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so how, a lot of our people do, man. A lot yeah. of our people listen to some trash. Yeah. Some straight up anathema. Yeah. So should we, should we throw out everything that a preacher says if we disagree with something like that's, that sounds like a little like the can't, we're going to cancel them, but no. what, what's the wisdom and how to navigate those things? I think it's this simple. So if you're asking is, does this preacher preach the gospel? Okay. Just when's the last time he preached the gospel? Mm-hmm. I mean, really the life, death and resurrection for the justification of us. Mm-hmm. the payment of our sins. When's the last time? And I don't mean a little tack on phrase at the end. I'm talking about when's the last time he preached it. Because what's hard, man, is people use many Bible verses and preach preach messages of hope mm-hmm. and perseverance. And you can get through this and God's got you in his hands and mm-hmm. all those things are true. Mm-hmm. But when is the last time you could listen to that message and hear a message of eternal life salvation? Mm-hmm. Now, what I don't want everybody to do is to like go heretic hunting. Because <laughs> listen, man, let me give somebody a break. Now, the gospel is the answer to any everything. But, you know, maybe you're doing a, thing, a, a wisdom series in the Proverbs and you don't explicitly bring up the gospel. I mean, I do a lot, but you don't explicitly bring up the gospel in every sermon because you're talking about whatever, finances or marriage or parenting. You know what I'm saying? Even though the reality is the gospel is the answer to all of those. That's right. So I'm having a hard time thinking of a place where I wouldn't bring up the gospel. However, I've been, I've been soaked and marinated in this very differently. Mm-hmm. Some people grew up in a thing where it's a very, um, all the words I want to say are like negative buzzwords in our world, but mm-hmm. but you're trying to meet people where they are mm-hmm. and give them truth from the Bible that will help yeah. you live your life. Make it accessible. Okay, right, 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 right. It's more of like a pep talk. Yeah, but so there, there could be like a really solid preacher that's in a series that's, you know, wisdom for today kind of stuff. Um, so, so if if a guy doesn't talk about the life, death, and resurrection in a sermon, don't shoot that guy. Mm-hmm. But if you can't find one, like mm-hmm. in a series in a long time, so we have there's there's this sweet lady. She's the sweetest lady ever. I love her so much, and she listens to a pastor that I think is a false preacher. And she's like, "What do you think about him?" I was like, "Well, I've never met him. That's my, always my answer." Okay, mm-hmm. and I do have a story about this guy where he helped a friend of mine. And when nobody else did, and it's like the most gracious thing I've ever heard of. Mm. My buddy went through a brutal divorce, and he was a pastor of a church, and the and the church fired him. And he did everything biblically to stay married. And mm-hmm. his wife was just crazy and was trying to kill their children. So what are you going to do? Right. So anyway, he gets fired. One church in town, one, one church in the country, said, "Come sit on the front row with me and my wife." Mm. And he did. And he didn't believe what the guy preaches, but. That guy was sweet. Okay, but sweet, sweetness don't get you in heaven. Mm. So I asked this lady that listens to this guy, let's, and, and I was like, they just did me. She's like, I like him so much, and he's so encouraging. I was like, I don't disagree. So just find me the last sermon where he preached the gospel. Mm-hmm. And it should be able to because he's on every radio station, and he's on the TV, and he's, on, he's got his own like XM station. So there's plenty of content out there. It ain't underground. Every once in a while, I see her. I was like, "Did you?" She's like, eh, "I hadn't found it yet." I'm like, "Right, mm-hmm. run, mm-hmm. run." Right. Yeah, the go- the gospel is not just being a better version of yourself. Like that's what is being preached. I think out mm-hmm. there, in in masqueraded in the church, mm-hmm. like it's just it's just you can be a better. Mm-hmm dad, a better husband, a better, you can look better. You can feel better. You can, all these things that the op, the gospel is opposite. It's, it's surrendering more and more. It's dying to yourself more and more. I mean, Jesus said, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will, will enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. But he says all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm-hmm. You got to understand that means the character and nature of Jesus. Yeah. So when you know him as savior, he'll mm-hmm. save you. Right. So here's the thing, man, just, you know, us girls talking, if you want, if you really want to get a bunch of YouTube hits, just preach the 
you can do it messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may be down and out now, but God's got a better plan. God's going to make a way. God's got all those things are true. Mm -hmm. And you can't leave that out from the full counsel of God because it's true. Mm -hmm. But if that's the only message that you get, Mm -hmm. that's about you. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's rooted in because of the resurrected Christ, the empty tomb, Mm -hmm. and the cross, Mm -hmm. God works in all things. He's not done with you. He's got a purpose and a plan. Okay, cool, man. Mm-hmm. But if it starts with you and ends with you victorious, that that is that is no gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but also the other way, if the only messages you hear are about all the things you shouldn't do, or if the only messages you ever hear are about how evil this world is and how separate we should be from it, mm-hmm. or if the only message you ever hear is about God's supernatural presence in your life, I'm just telling you, when's the last time this person that you're listening to Mm-hmm. Preach the gospel. I would also encourage, even if you if you listen to me, a lot of people listen to us here. I would encourage you to listen to series. So I know you can't listen to like fifty different pastors, and you kind of bounce around. I would encourage you not to just randomly bounce around. Mm-hmm. To like stick with you know, like listen to listen to us for all of Galatians, and then you know, listen to Chandler teach on that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then you'll get like more of a holistic yeah. uh, exposition of the scripture. Mm-hmm. And I would say if you're just doing that and you're not in the word yourself, right? There's so many people who are just listening to what you say about the scripture mm-hmm. or about, so, you know, another mm-hmm. pra- pastor or preacher. And it's, it's it's nothing. They're not getting. I I always say it's it's like you're you're eating Lucky Charms, you know, like for breakfast. Or you're not. It's not substantial. You can't live off of that if you're just doing a little devotional on your on Instagram or you're listening to someone else mm-hmm. read scripture instead of you in it yourself. It's the equivalent of like someone spoon feeding you. Yeah, correct. correct. And that's cool for babies. Yeah. yeah right. But. You got to grow up and read the Bible. Another Dude, thing. I got the best text. Can I brag? Yeah. My daughter today, God bless our student ministry, and Taylor Williams, who has been such a mentor in my daughter's life. She sent me this text. I love this so much. She says, hey, Dad, I was wondering if you could help me set up a plan for reading my Bible and maybe some days go over it with me. I'm really trying to grow in my relationship with him and start reading my Bible more, but I don't know where to start. Mm. So What's good. crazy is we are, you know, for sure we've done we've done this, so, at, you know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's less than great. Sure. But it's not until like, like this is, this is Christ inspired in her life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I was like, Yes, ma'am. I would be happy to mm-hmm. do this. You know what I mean? How great is that? Trying to like hide your excitement. Like, well, sure, yeah, cool. Yeah, not me. Cool, I was cool, like, cool. call me. <laughs> She's like, what do you need? I was like, you are the greatest. I love you so much. I loved you before, but I just still love you more but the same. So, um, but how great is that? Yeah. But the, I th- so the reason though, what got her there is now a lifetime. Mm-hmm. She's been a believer for a while. But her and mama have been, like, just putting kindling around her. It's been a whole bunch of, you're going to students, a whole bunch of, of course, Taylor can pick you up and take you to church, a whole bunch of, like, get your homework done so you can make sure you can do these things you want. And then the Lord lights the thing on fire. Mm -hmm. And I don't even mean just the fire of salvation. That was already present. Mm -hmm. But, like, a desire, because here's what she gets that a bunch of grown people don't get. Did you see what she said? I'm trying to deepen my relationship with him, and I know me and this book helps get there. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, she didn't make that up. Jesus says, abide in me, and I will abide in you. Then he says, abide in my word, and I will abide in you. Mm-hmm. You want to stay close to Jesus? You better get real yeah. dang close to his word. can't disconnect the two. No. Yeah, another thing to— And it will—sorry, it will help you spot the heretic or spot yes. the false gospel quicker yes. than anything else. Absolutely. Yes. And that's when you gonna, know it. It's the counterfeit money. That's right? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And that's what I was going to say is that one thing to watch for when you are listening, if you're listening to a preacher and you're not quite sure, just pause the video. They may, they'll read one verse, pause the video and go read, you know, yeah. a few verses before that, a few, a few verses after, or read like a, a study Bible's commentary of that. And it's like, I don't think that's about like what he's saying it is. Right. You know what I mean? That's called context. taking it out of context. Yeah, the... 
the theological term is Isa Jesus. Yes. I'm reading myself into the text. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Exegesis. We want to exit out the meaning, right? Yeah. <laughs> another another little side note to this is, uh, you know, we're a worshiping church. And so if you listen to a lot of worship music, the same thing can happen because a true message like we you will overcome or God's never going to let you down, that that message can be, a song that you just sing over and over and over and over again. And and how you understand the meaning of those words really matters a lot. God never letting you down means he's always faithful. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you get everything you want. Right. But I there think there are even some very popular songs that we won't sing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're so good. And I even listen to them in my own personal life because uh-huh. I just feel like I'm mature enough to like handle yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. Me too. <laughs> uh, and many times we have changed words because they're not like essential to the chorus of the song, but it was heresy. Mm-hmm. And, we, and sometimes it's just a preposition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that preposition makes the gospel about me and not about the glory of God. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That's not what that means. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, there's a song I like so much right now. I'm not going to say what it is, but it, the first line of it is just not true at all. And the whole rest of it is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I talked to the artist this weekend and I was mm-hmm. like, hey, man. I love that song so much. I listen to it right before I preach. We need to fix the first line, though. What can we do about that? And he's like, eh. he co-wrote it with another church mm. that would fall in the category of what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. And I, he, you know, I was like, come on, dude, you know better than that. And he's like, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then there's those songs that are like they're really catchy, and you're just like, man, I just don't really think that's true, <laughs> you know. But it's in my head. It's stuck in my head. Like you know? God's love is not reckless. Right, right. It's just not. Because mm-hmm. the word means, so the only time it makes sense is when Corey Asbury, is that who did it? Mm-hmm. Is He has to say, spend eight minutes talking about like setting it up. And in the context of what he says, it makes sense. It mm-hmm. seems as if it's reckless mm-hmm. from our point of yeah. view. And I'm like, yeah, but that's right. not what the song says. So, Like it's so outrageous that he- Yeah, he means lavish, really. He, lavish. he does, or yeah. nonsensical Nons- from yeah. like, a, what do I get out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Illogical. The Illogical. word, though, means without regard. Yeah. To outcome. Mm-hmm. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. So as the the chief disciple maker of this church, mm-hmm. the reason we don't sing this song, we sang it one time because I preached a whole sermon about it to set it up. We sang it one time. Oh, man, we can't sing it anymore. It just, it says, your love is reckless. Okay, about 50 times. Mm-hmm. Well, my problem with music sticks, man. Music sticks way mm-hmm. more than sermons. Mm-hmm. Well, if we sang that song for four years and then you were to say in the cyber group, so somebody to describe God's love, somebody goes reckless, I'd be like, meh. So mm-hmm. we can't undo yeah. things that are true about the character and nature of God because a song is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And the way to understand or to discern is to know the truth of the, of the scripture. So a couple of, if you just wanted some go-tos that you can trust in like crazy, the Shanes, mm-hmm. everything they write. They just they just sing scripture. Yeah, I was talking to <laughs> love it. Right, I was talking to one of the chains today about it because we we sing. Uh, what's that called? All sufficient uh, merit. All sufficient merit. And I took a picture of it from as I did. I love this song. And so anyway, I was talking to him earlier. But what they do, like I'm one of the people now. They write lyrics and submit it to gospel centered pastors and professors and theologians and mm-hmm. say, "Are we off here? Mm. Yeah, like w- w- you know." Uh, that that hymn of heaven, that whole album, same thing. We've mentioned. I have a bunch of people text me, be like, "Thanks for the, you know, for the shout out for that one." But he does the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, you you, you want to be clear and true more than anything. Mm. Yeah, it's it's such a responsibility that you're putting the you're putting theological tools and prayers in people's mouths Correct. and hearts, mm-hmm. you know. And there are some churches that I would not let the pastor preach here and we sing their songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because some of them, they're awesome. I mean, they're true. They're God-glorifying. They're in line with the reality of Scripture. Mm-hmm. It's not a full endorsement of everything that yeah. ministry creates. Which, yeah. some, which some churches take that approach. You know, if we can't endorse everything about this church, we won't sing their song. Correct. Which, you know, they're free to do that, I guess. Paul, when Those churches rarely... Do that plus say, but you guys should decide what's best for your church. <laughs> See previous comment exactly. about legalism. Exactly. Well, when Paul says, let him be accursed, he repeats it twice. He talked a lot about it, anathema. Does this mean we should call out false preachers and preach, 
preach against them. I know you have like a lot to say about min- quote unquote ministries that are the anti of other ministries. I think one of the things is, is it affecting your flock? Mm. So we are called to guard the flock. I don't see where we're called to go wolf hunting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But wolf hunting is kind of awesome. Yeah, it is. And we should not introduce wolves in Colorado. So that's also a thing. So, for instance, when Rob Bell wrote Love Wins from the stage, I was like, do not buy this book. This is heresy. If you want to read it, get it from the library or something because you don't want to support this person in his anti-gospel mm. campaign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That one was that big of a deal. Um, for sure, individually, I'm happy to share my thoughts on different pastors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I try to not, from stage, throw stones. The key thing is you got to really, a lot of folks confuse their own preferences with God's precepts, and that's where you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Listen, every pastor that you've ever heard of is on somebody's list of false preachers. (laughs) You know what I mean? I remember the first time I saw my name on one, when I saw who else was on the list, I was like, I have arrived. I made it. Because <laughs> it was all, the like in my opinion, like the most gospel-centered guys. And I'm sure. like, cool. I'm glad I made that list. That's good. Good company there. Yeah, there's a difference between like a critical eye and a critical heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, just anybody that moves away from the scriptures, anybody that tries to add to or not preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. Does that apply to... Um, other other issues like I think of political issues like you mentioned in, in kind of the progressive vein of false gospels is social justice you know and and justice needs no no adjective or whatever but right uh, there are a lot of people who would argue that no that we are talking about the gospel because the gospel has to affect how you vote and like what you and who you listen and what you do and so they have no problem calling out, hey, that person's wrong. You shouldn't listen to the, you know what I mean? But it's not how you choose to, you don't you don't choose to drop a lot of names like that. I'm, I'm very careful do. with yeah. that. I mean, I'm very, very careful with the responsibility that the Lord has given mm-hmm. me. And if you want to come up and complain about your last church, I'm the wrong guy after you talk to about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's some dangerous stuff out there. I think I've laid out a grid that should help you identify, mm-hmm. you know, who to listen to. Mm. Another way you could do it, just take the last 40 years of Saturated. Just listen to all those preachers mm. and you're in really, really good shape. Mm. They've got enough sermons out there to equip you forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the thing about the, the social justice warriors is God is for justice. He is just. Justice isn't the gospel. According to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, mm-hmm. according to Paul... The gospel is the life, death, resurrection of Jesus according to the scriptures, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Now, the implications of the gospel Mm -hmm. is going to be what all of four and uh, five, chapters five and six of Galatians are. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the first two chapters, Galatians can really be divided in thirds. The first two chapters are about authority. Mm -hmm. Here's why you should believe Paul, Mm -hmm. because he received this gospel directly from the resurrected Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, The middle two chapters are the substance of the gospel. And then the the last two chapters are the application of the gospel. But he doesn't confuse the application with the substance of the gospel. Mm. So racial reconciliation is not the gospel. If you know Jesus, Mm -hmm. the the love of Christ compels you Mm -hmm. to share the gospel with every tribe, tongue, and nation and be reconciled to every other human being as as much as it is possible with man mm-hmm. for sure right but you could you could have all the right beliefs mm-hmm. about racial relationships that does not mean that you have been justified before god that's right that's what the life death and resurrection of jesus does so to confuse those every church and denomination that has done that that says well listen it's not so much about it's really about feeding the poor. Mm-hmm. So that's what matters the most is feeding the poor. Haven't you read Matthew chapter 25? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You just stretch that out for a little while. They, they don't love Jesus anymore. Mm-hmm. They just exist to feed the poor. Mm-hmm. Sure. And the the message becomes subservient to the action. Mm-hmm. And that is no gospel. 
And should we feed the poor? Are you kidding? We sponsored 21,000 compassion kids. Mm -hmm. Around here, we lifted up as high as you possibly can. We got the 1010 life and the abundant life and all of our partners and Mm -hmm. and none of those things will save you. Now, if you're saved, you should be about them. Right. But But being about them doesn't save you. Just a humanitarian organization Mm -hmm. apart from Christ is fixing a temporary need. Yeah, it's really damning people to hell. Yeah, yeah. It actually may be... It actually may be more dangerous. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, because, you know, John Piper again says, we're against all human suffering, especially eternal. Right. So that's our stance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that, does that control for you the amount of programs that the church runs? You know, for example, there are churches that, large churches that would run a feeding ministry or run a, you know, you name it. Sure. Kind of ministry. Like, does does what you just said a few minutes ago affect? It definitely impacts us. Mm-hmm. Like, where's the kingdom work here, mm-hmm. not just humanitarian effort? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, when a hurricane hits and we send out a team, I don't know that every single person is getting the gospel shared with them. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're just trying to clean up because there's that opportunity. Mm-hmm. But you go there and read the Bible pro- out loud. Yeah. Just- <laughs> Proportionately, we partner with people that are about God's kingdom, mm-hmm. not this temporary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're almost out of time, and I want to ask this question. Um, you know, we've talked about uh, Galatians being a very intense, having given an intense tone to it. And so how, how much, I know Pastor, I mean, not very intense as a, as a person in general, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, sarcasm. I know. I got uh, it. When you were talking about how sometimes you got to crank it up, I am all the way on the other end. Like, you're like, yeah, me too. I my really poor relate. wife, man. I really relate. Not even to her. <laughs> That's not as much a thing, but like, I can't tell you the number of times she's like, we, can you, like, oh. I'm, right, I'm standing right here. I, I can hear you. I just, you don't have to. Dude, last night we were coming home from a, a dinner and uh, we live in a, Gated neighborhood and the gate never works right. It's all it's a thing always. It's so so frustrating. So, and I know it's first world problems. But we get there and and the cars are all backed up and the gate is like halfway open and it's got one of those little arms because everybody tries to cheat in mm-hmm. and nothing's on and nothing's working. And so we're cars are stacking up. And so I just get out and walk up there and I'm just like, I just wrench the gate open. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go. And things going, nee, nee. and Gretchen's like, there are cameras. There, that's all, she, there are cameras. So then I go and try to get the pole and they've screwed it in now. So I unscrew it and throw it down. <laughs> And she's the rule follower. Bro. Everyone else in the back's cheering yeah, on. Yeah, they are. We all united. Ram the gate. Honestly, every tribe, tongue, and nation lives in my neighborhood, and they were all there like, Ooh. I was like, I got it. Follow me, boys. And so, and then we get in, and it wasn't, thank you for getting us into our home. It's like, we are going to be in so much trouble. Like, for you what? I'm embarrassed. Coming me. home? Anyway. But yeah, the, my... my I see red. I'm intense. I'm yeah. So d- how much how much do you relate to Paul's intensity and his protectiveness? Like who's bewitched? You? Like as Some, a pastor, what I try to do sometimes is remind people this is because I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because I love you, and it you got to really hate somebody. To know that eternity's on the line and not sh- not just get in their way and say, over my dead body, will you go to hell? Mm-hmm. You got to really hate somebody that's buying into the lies of this world, mm-hmm. which are vast these days, right? Mm-hmm. And not preach the truth of the word because you're afraid to offend them. Mm-hmm. Now, I have many times done this poorly and people get offended by the wrong. They get offended by me, mm-hmm. probably rightly because I was offensive. Instead of staying hyper-focused on the truth of the word. Mm. And listen, man, I do it because, like, tonight, man, I met this girl, she's, like, 25 years old, and her friend came up who's been attending here for a long time, and she's like, this is my one more, and she raised her hand tonight. Mm. It wasn't, like, a sweet message. It wasn't like, you can overcome. It wasn't that message, right? right? And so that's what I do. Or the number of people that have said, you know, our marriage has been Change because they were they were believing a lie. They weren't looking for the gospel to transform their marriage. They were looking for like tips and tricks, and they just ain't gonna do it. Mm-mm. 
So to all the people that do encourage, it is so encouraging. It is fuel in my tank to mm. keep doing what I think God's called me to do. Well, we had a, a couple here the past few days interviewing for a position here at the church. And one of the things that I often tell people about this place when they're thinking about, hey, has God called us to come here? I say, one of the things I love, and I'll say this to you, one of the things I love about what Pastor, how Pastor Joby leads us is that we keep the main thing the main thing. Like, it's the gospel. It's it's like we're just discovering deep in a relationship with Jesus Christ. I mean, we talked, I was talking with some other folks the other day about Easter. It was like, we didn't try to like make it, you know, a big top circus on Easter. It's just like, we're just talking about the gospel and the cross. You know what I mean? And so I just thank you and honor your commitment to the one gospel here because I think it is, it is a huge part of what God's doing to bless this place, and I certainly love it. I know God's honoring it. So, Well, I appreciate that, but it's not— I don't have enough confidence in my own gifts and abilities mm -hmm. to keep those plates spinning. Mm -hmm. Like, if we got to outdo every Easter, but do you know how freeing it is? Even though I'm a little bit like, oh, my gosh, I think I just preached six weeks' worth of messages tonight. Mm-hmm. But you know how freeing it is to just do the next text and do the next text and do the next text and just walk through what it says mm -hmm. and just, I mean, part of the reason we put the big cross out front when we planted this thing, mm -hmm. uh, there were some church experts that were like, hey, you want to keep the religious icons to a minimum because the Gen Z, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> and so I was like, how about a 50-foot red cross? How about that? What does that sound like? And... uh because I want to, I want people to have no doubt about what we do. We just point people to the cross, mm. no matter what the series is. Yeah, whether it's a family series or a Seven Sayings of Jesus mm -hmm. or a book of the Bible, we just point people to the cross. Because the gospel applies to all of it. Right. Well, any closing comments or closes in prayer? Caitlin, anything? Nope. I I think I said everything I wanted to say. You said smart things. I'm glad you're here. Thanks. <laughs> Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you so much for the people that met you uh, mm. tonight for the yeah. very first time and that will meet you uh, throughout this whole weekend. And Lord, we just thank you that, um, that the power is not in the presentation. It's surely not in any personality. The mm. power to change lives, to rescue people from sin, hell, and death is the good news of the gospel that our king has defeated the enemy. And the result is grace and peace for us. Mm -hmm. We pray this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to the podcast. <laughs> the end. <You> <laughs>